Hello everybody. Today is a very exciting day because I get to do something that I have been looking forward to since, I think since I started woodworking. What is that you may ask? Well, I've got a big box here full of dust extraction pipes and junctions. This is like recreating my childhood with things like marble runs and connects and Lego and doing it on a bigger scale. Seriously, I've been looking forward to doing this for a stupid amount of time. Let's get going. Now, let me just give you a rundown of my current situation with things. I've got my two machines, a bandsaw and a planer. And each time I have to wheel my extractor over to it, plug in the hose to the bandsaw. And then if I want to plane something real quick, I've got to take it off, unplug the extractor because the cord's only like a meter long. Wheel it over here, plug it into my planer thicknesser down here. And then when it gets flipped over to the thicknessing mode, the extractor then flips over this way. So I've got to move this back a little bit in order to get it in there. And it slows everything down so much having to wheel this round and also like get it over all the wires and stuff for my lights. It's just a bit of an obstacle course half the time. So originally I had plans to have it parked permanently in the corner over here. See, look, just having to get things out of the way all the time. I don't know if it's because I'm messy or not. Yeah, I had planned to have it parked in the corner like this. And then I could run extraction from here up along a pipeline and down to each of those machines. The problem with this being the start of it here, where this sticks out, it means I've got to do some like really weird bend in order to direct the tube up towards the wall. And the thing to note when you're doing dust extraction is the more bends you have in the system, the more the airflow gets reduced. So ideally you want to have as smooth and straight and run as possible. And starting out with a huge kink like this is not good really. So an obvious solution would be to turn the extractor around the other way. The only problem with that being that the Y junction here means this has to sit out quite far from the wall and it makes the switch on the back quite difficult to access as well. As you can see here, my switch is there and it's being restricted by the door and this is encroaching on the entrance way anyway. So it's not an ideal place for it, which is also the reason I can't have this sideways like that as well, because again, it gets in the way of the door. So what is the solution to this? Well, I have got a mezzanine floor, which kind of came with the workshop when I moved in. I adapted it a little bit and I kept it here because I didn't really know what to do with it. But at the same time, I didn't want to get rid of it because it was pretty cool to have a mezzanine floor. I'm thinking if I get that extractor up here and the tubes poke out here, it's like at the perfect height for the tube run to go all the way down and then feed to the machines. It means that the hose isn't gonna be violently kinked as soon as it comes out the extractor and therefore lose the airflow. It means the extractor is out of the way. The only downsides being that when I change the bag, then I'm gonna to have to come up here to do it and then chuck the bag down. I'm not too fussed about that. I'll find out other ways of doing it and also turning it on and off. I can just jump on my workbench and reach the switch. So I'm thinking, the extractor is gonna go up here. The first thing I need to do is disassemble it. Inside this box, we've got a lot of junctions and a lot of pipes. So Y junction, joiners, glass gates, all stuck together, right angle bends, try and use as few of those as possible. Uh, the things that join it to the wall. And then at the bottom, there's some more pipes. So first thing I want to check is if I can get a straight pipe between here, linking directly to the wall. Oh, yes. I can't believe how well that fits. 
That's mental. Now, the only problem I've got here is that the extraction is right up against the wall and I've got the trunking for all of my electrics here. So if this is clamped against the wall, I can't run a solid pipe down from there. I don't want to run any bendy pipe down from here because again, you start losing airflow. It's better for it just to be a solid tube all the way down. So what I'm going to do is move this extractor back a little bit and then pack out the wall with just a solid bit of wood or something like that and then attach this to that. Should then stick it out enough in order for me to clear the trunking here, hopefully. So obviously up here is all plasterboard and the white patches are where they filled in the screw holes, which implies that is where a stud can be found. So I reckon I could just drive in a massive screw through all the brackets, through the wood, and then into the stud behind, hopefully. And then I don't have to do any sort of fancy fixings into the plasterboard at all. I can just go straight in. We'll give it a go. This is the wobbliest platform in the world. There we go, we're all piped in. So, router table. It's got a 63 millimeter output going to a converter with its own blast gate here. This one feeds down to the bandsaw. It does have a second outlet here, but I never really saw the need of it. And even when you take it out, uh, there's a little bit of dust in there, but not a whole lot. And of course, it's got its own blast gate for that as well. And then moving around to the planar thicknesser, Again, another blast gate here. And then that will feed down here to the extraction coming out the bottom of the planer. But the question is, do we have airflow? So let's give it a go. Yes. All three machines, plenty of airflow coming out of them. The bandsaw had loads coming out of it. I guess because it's a pretty straight run, apart from that kink there, there's not a lot of bends in it. I could definitely tell that the planar thicknesser was reduced a little bit, most likely because of all those kinks in that pipe there. I think as soon as I sort that out, that should be dramatically improved because that's the one that's gonna require the most amount of airflow from it. So the final thing we need to do with this pipe work is ground it because these are made from PVC, which can generate static electricity with all of the shavings and dust and stuff going through it. And at the extreme end of the scale, static electricity built up in this thing can cause an explosion, which would not be ideal. Um, at the other end of the scale, the sort of minor things you get from it is electric shocks, which can be pretty painful. I used to get it quite a lot in my old workshop when my extractor was hooked up to the planar thicknesser and I would just brush up against that hose and get a little zap from it, which wasn't really nice. So we obviously don't want any of those to happen. So what I've got here is a grounding kit, which is 15 meters of copper wire with a few anchoring things in there. And that needs to be threaded through the inside 
of these pipes at a bare minimum. You can also do it on the outside to further reduce the static energy, but it needs to be done on the inside, ideally, which isn't gonna be easy now that I've got it all piped in. Probably should have done it beforehand, but we'll make do with it. Now, my plan of action is to ground it at the extractor using one of the metal screws that surrounds the fan and then run it internally along the pipework and then have it external around this junction here. So then I can join the three sections together easily without having to fiddle inside the pipe whatsoever and then run those down from there. All right, so currently we've got it grounded to the dust extractor right about there, and then it runs internally on the tube to the first junction where I've then taken it external and joined it with this sort of thing that's supplied with the kit. That means that the wire is pulled tight against the tube here and also here, and then on the inside there as well, and along here as well. And I haven't joined it to this section yet because I'm gonna start thinking about running it down to the planar thicknesser. So the hose that runs to the planar thicknesser is copper coiled anyway, but I'm still going to add the grounding kit to it just as a extra precaution. One thing that I want to sort out here is the overall length of the hose itself, because it's quite long at the moment. And when it comes to flipping this into the thicknessing mode, it can obstruct the outfeed a little bit. So when it comes to flipping it over like this, as you can see, unless I hook the hose over the tables like this, it tends to fall down and get in the way of the wood as it feeds out the machine. But having this big knot here reduces the airflow. So I wanna cut this down a little bit so that there isn't as much going on. Then I'll start feeding the grounding kit through it. All right, so not the tidiest job in the world, but we've got the new connection going on there, running down to the inside of the pipe, down here, round the side of the blast gate, and then it's going through the tube, down here, and then out, and I've connected it to these three screws, which are connected to the hood of the planar thicknesser, and I had enough to attach it to all three, so I might as well. So those screws have gone through the plastic and into the metal hood, and that should be the planar thicknesser, grounded from there. So it's connected all the way through to the extractor, down and through there. So for the bandsaw, I'm gonna ground it straight into the machine itself. Probably gonna do it into this column here because there's nothing in this area on the opposite side. And I've got a nice little access point for the wire to go in there and then wrap around the head of the screw. Piping in place, grounded, so I don't have any unexpected explosions happen in the workshop. This is going to be so nice to work with in the future. Instead of rolling around that extractor 
I've just now got to climb on my workbench and flick it on up there. At least it's a lot more interesting and fun. So yeah, suggestions if you are to do this yourself, don't install the pipes, then ground them afterwards because it was an absolute nightmare to try and get in there and thread the wire through. Thread the wire through while you're installing the pipes. That would be a much better way of doing it. I've been doing this over a series of nights, um, probably taken me about five hours altogether to get this all up, but could have easily done it in four if I was to ground it while I was putting the system in. So uh, it's not too big of a task, but it's definitely worth doing. Uh, if you have any questions about the setup I have here or any other things that you want to know, be sure to drop a comment below. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.